Good morning, family. Welcome this morning to the exciting Bible Way Community Baptist Church, the place where Jesus Christ is Lord of all and the Word of God still transform lives. We're excited and delighted that you have tuned in to be a part of our Sunday morning broadcast. As I always say, it's no accident or coincident that you done tuned in, but it's by the providence of God. God has something he wants to say and something that he wants to do in your life. And so the Lord has touched your heart to tune in and get a word from the Lord. You know, Jesus says man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. And so we are thankful that you have tuned in to get this word. And that's a good word this morning. Listen, uh, before we get into the service, let me make an announcement. Um, the first Sunday, the first Sunday of next month, November, uh, we will be... Uh, celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, not only in person here at the church, but also online, also online. Uh, we're going to bring that back. We're going to bring that back. I was talking to one of my members, and the members were letting me know, Pastor, we're not getting the Holy Communion. We're not getting, I said, oh, my bad. My bad. I do apologize. That that was my bad. And uh, I should have been more careful checking the tapes and what have you. And uh, uh, so that was my bad. But we're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. I just ask y'all to forgive me, to forgive me, because we want to make sure that you are taken care of and your needs, your spiritual needs, and that's a spiritual need, Holy Communion. You need Holy Communion. You need Holy Communion. And so uh, we're going to make sure that your spiritual needs are being met. And anytime you feel like your needs is not being met, whether it's uh, spiritual or physical or whatever the need is, uh, I'm your pastor and your pastor care about you. Your pastor care about you. Yes, he do. And so you just let me know. You just let me know. Call the church here. Uh, 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 send us an email or something. You let me know uh, and I'm going to get right on it. We're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. All right. All right. All right. Now, listen. Uh, do God hear every prayer? There are some prayers that God will hear and there are some prayers that God won't hear because now that's what we're going to be talking about today. So you need to stay tuned and get this word from the Lord to find out just what kind of prayers God is going to hear. Now, I'm going to bring you a good word this morning, but um, first we need to get some good singing. And right after that good singing, I'm going to come back with a good word from the Lord. So get ready, get ready, get ready, and let's have some church.
Let us pray. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you. We do praise you for who you are. The God who hear and you still answer prayers. Speak to our hearts now in a mighty way. Go before us, go with us, and go behind us. Give us preaching grace. Give your people here in grace. Give us all doing grace. And we'll be careful to praise you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. He can do it. How many of you know that he can? He can do it. Do I have any believers in their house? He He can do it. He's still in the healing business. He can do it. For those of you who have your Bibles, open with me to Psalm 65. Psalm 65. I want to look at Psalm 65. And I want to look at the first two verses, and that'll be enough to get us started. Uh, Psalm 65, when you find it, say, I got it. I got it. Psalm 65, verses 1 and 2. It says, praise wait for thee, O God. In Zion, and the thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hear it, prayer unto thee shall all flesh come. I'm gonna look at that verse number two again, because that's where I get the title to my text where it says, O thou that hear it, pray. A shout go there. Yeah. 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 yeah, you want a God that hear your prayer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh now you're feeling me, now you're feeling me. Yeah. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the prayers that God hears. The prayers that God hears. Tell somebody that pastor going to talk about the prayers that God hears. The prayers that God hears. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. This morning... I want to finish our series of messages that we have been preaching through the Psalms. And we've been looking at David's wilderness experiences out of the book of Psalms. And when I first turned to Psalm 65, I saw a message and I wanted to preach about praise. Uh, but with all of what the church is going through, I'm going to say that for a more appropriate time where we can really rejoice. And I'm going to preach it expository where I work my way through the passage. But today, uh, the Lord gave me something else when I looked again uh, about the prayers that God hears. Uh, 
rather than preaching on praise, I preach on prayer. Because that's what we need right now with all that we are going through as a church. We need some prayer. But God don't hear every prayer. There are some prayers that God will hear and there are some prayers that God won't hear. Are you with me this morning, by the way? I'm going to teach this morning so you can kind of relax a little bit. I ain't going to cut you up too much. This is going to be more of a teaching message. So get your pen and paper out because I'm going to take five things off the wagon. But you already know I'm not going to be able to labor because I'm taking all five things off. So I won't be able to labor those points, but I'll give you the scripture reference and you can look at it right. in your own leisure. Would that be all right? Yes. Uh, first of all, God hears the prayer of the righteous heart, but God will not hear the prayer of an unrighteous heart. Yes. Let me say it again. God hears the prayer of a righteous heart. But God will not hear the prayer of an unrighteous heart. Now keep in mind, keep in mind, there's always exception to the rules because we serve a God of grace. But the general principle is God will hear the prayer of the, the righteous, but he won't hear the prayer of the unrighteous. That's the general rule. Look at your text right here. It says, O thou that hear it prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. You know, I don't care who you are, you're going to need to pray sooner or later. I don't care how much money you got, how rich you are, how poor you are. Uh, sooner or later, everybody going to have to pray. And you may say, well, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. Atheists and foxholes believe in God. Yeah, let the bullets start flying at you. Why do when bullets start flying at people that say, oh, God, help us, help You get in trouble. I'm going with the Bible, and the Bible says, Unto thee shall all flesh come. Everybody coming to God with a prayer request. But he won't hear every prayer request. Iniquity prevail against me as for our transgression. Thou purge them away. David says, Man, I was loaded down with sin. But God took them all away. And he heard my prayer. That's why David is praising God, because God heard his prayer. He had a bunch of sins, but God took all his sins away. And now that God done took his sins away, he qualified for answered prayer. Look, 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 look. Verse number five, he says, by terrible things. When he say terrible, that word terrible means awesome. How many know God is an awesome God? By awesome things in righteousness will thou answer us. God will answer you when you get it right. Did you hear what I said? It's in righteousness. It's in holiness uh, that God will answer your prayer. If you ain't got no righteousness or holiness, in, then don't be looking to get your prayers answered. Oh, you ain't feeling it yet. Look at Psalm 66 and 18. Psalm 66 and 18. Look at what David says. He says, if I regard iniquity, in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. 
Is that in your Bible? He says, if I regard iniquity, what is iniquity? It's wickedness. It's sinfulness. If I hold on to my sins, they say, God ain't no hear my prayer. I don't care how hard you pray, God say, I ain't hearing you. Notice, he said, because you regard. What did that word regard mean? To respect. You respect your wickedness. Uh, that word regard. You honor your wickedness. Oh, you ain't feeling me yet. You love your sinfulness. You got a deep affection for your sin. See, a lot of times people say, why is it that God won't answer my prayer? I've been praying right here. Look at that verse. Because you respect your sins more than you respect God. You, you, you love your sin. See, your sin is your baby. You, you, you hold on to your baby. You regard your baby. See, if you had a baby this morning, you just wouldn't handle your baby any kind of way. No, no, you're going to protect that baby. You're going to... Be, even somebody said, let me hold the baby. You, uh, you examining them. Do I want them to? <laughs> Hello, somebody. And then if that baby starts, oh, just, oh, no, I can't let you have my baby. That's regard. And see, some of us baby in our sins. And let me tell you, God is not going to go in a wrestling match with you to wrestle your sins out of your life. A lot of times people say, God, just take it away. Take it away. God ain't no take it away. You know why? Because you got to give it away. See, if you want God to take away your sin, you got to give him your sin. Share it to him. Give it as long as you cherishing it, God, take away my sin. He ain't no wrestle you the sin away. And as a result, you're gonna miss out on answered prayer. Amen. See, you gotta get to the place in your life that God, whatever God say, goes. If God say this ain't good for you, that ain't good for you. If God said you can't have that, then you can't have that. Amen. See, that's what confession of sins mean. See, write this scripture down. First uh, John 1 and 9. The Bible says if we confess our sins. That word confess means to agree with God. When we confess that this ain't good for me. And God, I don't want it no more. And you give it to him. And you turn your back on it. That's repentance. God will go on and take it away. Because God said, they don't want it. They done gave it to me. So I'm, I'll go ahead and take it away. And I'll remove that sin out of your life. Yes, Lord. That's why the Bible tells you in your Bible. In James chapter 5. The prayer of the righteous. Yes, yes. Avail it much. Yes. God will hear yes. the prayer of the righteous, yes, he will. but he won't hear the prayer of the unrighteous. Number two, number two. God will hear the prayer of a believing heart, but God will not hear the prayer of an unbelieving heart. Did you hear what I said? I said God will hear the prayer of a believing heart, but God will not hear the prayer of an unbelieving heart. See, you got to have faith that God can do it. I say you got to have faith that God 
can do it. Now look, look right here at verse 5 again. Psalm 65. He says, by terrible things are, that word terrible again, it's awesome things in righteousness will thy answer us. O God of our salvation, it is who art the confident of all the ends of the earth and of them that are far off upon the sea. I don't care where you go. I don't care where you're at. If you want your prayer answered, you better have confidence. People that's getting their prayers answered is because they got confident. <laughs> From sea to shine and sea, they got confident. Them that's near and them that's far away, that's getting their prayers answered from God. They getting it answered because they got confident that he can do it. They sung it this morning. He can do it. You got to have confidence when you pray that God can do it. Yeah. I heard people, they, they often ask the question. When you pray, do you just supposed to just pray one time and then leave it alone? Yeah. Do you... Some people say you're just supposed to pray one time and leave it alone and that's it. And if you pray more than one time, that shows you ain't got no confidence. Well, let me answer the question this way. It's a yes and a no. Yes, you just pray one time and don't pray no more. If God done answered your prayer. If God done told you that you done got what you asked for, then you don't have to keep asking. Let me tie a scripture to that. Uh, uh, St. John chapter 4, uh, around the 40 some verses. It, it's. Uh, uh, you'll find a story about a nobleman that came to Jesus and he uh, told, asked Jesus, Jesus, come and heal my son. And Jesus says, go your way, your son is healed. Well, the Bible said that the man just went his way. And by him being a nobleman, he was a businessman. So he went and took care of his business. And after he finished taking care of his business, the next day he went home. When he got home, as he was coming down the road, somebody ran out there and they told him, your son is healed, your son is healed. And he said, what time did he get healed? And he says, yesterday at a such and such time. He knew that was the very hour the very moment that Jesus said, your son is healed, he was healed right then. So when you don't need to keep praying over and over and over, if God done gave you the assurance that what you're praying for, you already got it. You already got it. But most of the time, if you're like most people when you pray heaven is silent a lot of time heaven is silent so when heaven is silent i think you show confident by keep on praying yeah you keep on praying because you ain't got no answer yet uh, yeah, you keep on praying and you keep on praying and you keep on praying. As a matter of fact, Jesus tells several stories in the Bible on persistent prayer. He talks about how this lady over in Luke chapter 18, starting in uh, verse number one. Matter of fact, before he tells that story, he says men should always pray and not faint. Let me tell you something. You're going to either pray or you're going to give up. 
You better learn how to pray. And, and you better learn how to pray your way through. You keep praying until you get an answer from the Lord. And Jesus told how this lady uh, went to this unjust judge and went there to, to try to get some help from the judge. And she kept showing up every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. She kept showing up every day. And the judge says, man, I'm going to go ahead and give this lady what she's asking for. And he says, because I don't even respect man. I don't even have no respect from God. But because this lady keep on coming, she about to wear me out. So I'm going to give her what she asked for. And Jesus said, did you hear what the unjust judge say? Now, if people can wear out people like that and they can get what they want from people by asking something from another person, he said, what do you think about God who loves you? If, if man going to answer your prayer request and they don't have no respect for God, no respect for man, but man will help you. What about a God who respects his son as well as respects his children? He will answer your prayer. But you got to show that he got faith. You know, another time Jesus told the story about this man that came and was knocking at midnight for some bread. And the friend wouldn't get up and get him no bread. But he kept on knocking at the door until the friend finally got up and got him some bread. And he says, I'm going to get up and give you some bread. But he said, man, the reason I'm giving you some bread is not because we're friends. He said, because you won't let me sleep. You keep knocking at this door. He didn't give up. Why? Because he knew his friend had some bread. In the same way, you show you got faith in God because you know God got what you need. And so you just camp out at heaven's door and say, I ain't going nowhere, God, because I know you got. <laughs> you got what I need. And that's why the Bible tells you to ask. And that's in the present tense. So it means to keep on asking. So it says, ask and you shall receive. But you got to keep on asking. And then it says, seek. And that's also in the present. That means you got to keep on seeking. And it says you'll find it. And it says knock. That's in the present. You got to keep on knocking. And it said the door will be open. But you got to show you got confident by asking. You know, when you take that word and line it out, you come up with A S K. Which just basically mean ask. ask. God says ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You didn't ask me. You go and ask BB, Bubba, Buki, Cookie. You ask everybody else but the law. God hears the prayers of the righteous. He hears the prayer of the believing heart. But number three, God hears the prayer of the humble heart. Not a prideful heart. God will hear the prayer of a believing heart, a humble heart, but he won't hear the prayer of a prideful heart. Yeah. Read that same chapter when you get home, Luke 18, and you'll find another story in there about Two men went to the temple to pray. 
it says one was a Pharisee. In other words, he was a religious man. And then the other one was a publican. And the Bible says that the Pharisee prayed thus to himself. In other words, his prayer didn't get past the ceiling. And particularly when you listen to how he prayed. He said, I thank you that I ain't like other men's are. I'm not an extortioner. In other words, I don't kill, don't steal, don't take from others. Not an adulterous man. Not even like this publican back here. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of everything I possess. And the Bible says that the publican, the sinner man, wouldn't even come on in the church. It came right there to the threshold of the door there and began to pat his chest. That was a sign of humility. He said, Lord, be merciful to me because I'm a sinner. And the Bible says that man went home justified rather than the other. God heard the sinner man prayer, but he didn't hear that old man who thought that he was so good. He was self-righteous, but he wasn't righteous in God. I sight. And see, that's the thing about pride. That's why you want to pray, Lord, don't let me be a, a prideful man. Because a prideful person don't have the correct evaluation of life. See, you, do you see how that man missed it? He thought that he was A-OK, -okay, but he wasn't OK. See, you can be thinking that you're OK, but you're not OK when your head is filled with pride. You could be thinking that you're right, and everybody else wrong, but in all actuality, you wrong and they right. You got it twisted. Matter of fact, whenever you're trying to witness to somebody and they get it all twisted, you know you're dealing with a prideful person. Because they got it twisted. And see, the thing about a prideful person, they don't ask for anything. They tell you what they do. They go around bragging on themselves. That's how you know you're dealing with a prideful person. They always bragging about, see what I did, see what I did, see what I did, see what I did, see what I did. Yeah. But a humble person is always saying, can you help me? Yeah. Back in the day, they used to sing a song. I'm not too proud to be. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And see, that's what prayer is in its essence. Prayer in its essence is asking God. Sometimes people, I listen to the way they pray, and man, they be talking about telling God about what they done done and, and they fix it now you, you, you got to be careful because they fix it like it's a praise but really they bragging on they they, bra they bragging <laughs> they bragging on they self and I said now when is they going to ask God something God thank you for this and thank you for that thank you for my new car yeah. And then right after the prayer request, then they showed me the new card. Have you seen it? <laughs> See, that was on their mind. <laughs> we ought to be thinking what's on your mind is what you really ask God. After we finish praying, you say, can you keep that on your prayer list? Yeah, I, I, I want you to really pray about that for me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So God will hear. Let me move on. God will hear the humble man prayer, but he won't hear. 
the prideful man pray. Are you ready for number four? God will hear the committed heart pray. But God will not hear the uncommitted heart pray. God will hear the committed heart pray. But God will not hear the uncommitted heart prayer. Y'all stay with me. Stay with me. Look right here. Psalm 65 verse 1. <laughs> Praise waits for thee, O God in Zion. And unto thee shall the vow be performed. Let me read it again. Praise waited for thee, O God in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. David was in a bad situation. Remember, we've been reading about him out there in the wilderness. David was in a bad situation. And the way that David got God's attention to answer his prayer, he made a sacred vow to the Lord. He says, God, if you get me out of the mess that I'm in, then I'll do this for you. And then God heard his prayer. Listen to this. Sometimes God will not hear your prayer without a pledge. Let me say it to this side over here. That's all right. Say it again. Sometimes God will not hear your prayer okay. without a pledge. Okay. In other words, you got to promise God something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want God to hear your prayer? Promise God something. You say, well, wait a minute, why should I promise God something? I mean, I mean God got everything. He do, but his people on earth don't. Yeah, that's right, that's right. See, God cares about his kingdom program. Yes. See, what God cares about more than anything on this earth is his kingdom agenda. Yes. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, think about the kingdom. He says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom. Pastor. It's all about the kingdom. God is not interested in giving nobody something if it has no concern for his kingdom. See, why should God answer your prayer and you don't care nothing about his church? Why should God answer your prayer, but you don't care nothing about the people of God? Why should God answer your prayer, and you don't care about the house of God? God gets his work done through the people of God, through the house of God. God wants his house to be blessed. God wants his people to be blessed. The church is to be a blessing to this world. But in order for the church to function properly, you don't heard me say it over and over, you got to have M&Ms. You got to have members and you got to have money. See, why should God answer your prayer and you ain't a member? of his church. Oh, I heard, the, I heard one day uh, uh, the story about how when Katrina was taking place down there in New Orleans, all these people was out there on the streets and somebody in them, they started uh, uh, fussing and they was being mad and angry at God and talking about, uh, where's God at? Where's God at when you need him? Where's God at when you need him? So a preacher was down there he said, God is busy helping his people right now. 
Yeah. See, sinners don't think about God until they need something. If you want your prayer to be answered, you need to become one of the people of God. Because God is sending his blessings to his people, to his church. Don't get outside the ark of safety. If you want to be blessed, get in the ark of safety. Oh, I know I'm right. Let me tie a scripture to that. Matter of fact, I want you to see this scripture over in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Amen. I want you to see this lady named Hannah. I, I want you to see Hannah. Look right here. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse number 10 and 11. You know, Hannah was in a bad situation. Uh, uh, she was in a polygamous marriage where her uh, husband had an, another wife. And the other wife was spitting out babies just like that there. Yeah. Uh, but Hannah couldn't have no baby. And regardless how she prayed, she couldn't have no baby. But she went to the house of God. And when she got there to the house of God, she was in bitterness. In other words, she was mad at God. She was mad at her situation. But the Bible says, and she was in bitterness, verse 10, of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if, watch this, it's gonna be an if then, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. Look, she didn't say just give me a baby. She said, I'm, I want a boy. A man child. Then, somebody ought to say then. Then, then I'll give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come up on his head. She says, God, if you give him to me, then I'll give him back to you to be used in the service of the Lord. And that was what got God's attention and God answered her prayer and God gave her a boy named Samuel. And the word Samuel means because God hears my prayers. How I many of you know God hear and he will answer? Your prayer. Listen, listen, if you're not getting your prayers answered, why don't you try that sometime? Why don't you say, Lord, if you do this for me, this is what I'm going to do for your church. Lord, if you do this for me, this is what I'm going to do for the people of God. Lord, if you do this for me, this is what I'm going to do for the house of God. And come through with what you say now. Because the Bible says it's better to not even vow, vow, than to vow and not keep it. See, tears didn't move God. Long prayers didn't move God. It was that pledge that moved God because God is concerned about his people. He's concerned about his house. That moves the hand of God. You want God to answer your prayer? Be righteous. God will hear the righteous hard prayer. You want God to answer your prayer? Be believing. God to answer a believing heart prayer. You want God to hear your prayer? Be humble. God to hear humble prayer. You want God to answer your prayer? Be committed. God to hear that prayer. And finally, if you want God to answer your prayer, have a loving heart. God will hear the prayer of a loving heart. But God will not hear the prayer 
of an unloving heart. Let me say it again. God will hear the prayer of a loving heart. But God will not hear the prayer of an unloving heart. It's all about a love affair. It is. God is in the business of blessing people that love him. You in that same business too. You go around blessing your wife. Hello somebody. Because your wife loves you. Hello, somebody. You don't go around blessing people that don't love you. You go around blessing people that loves you. They get your best blessings. Hello, somebody. Oh, yes, I know, you know, we throw in some on the side for other. But your choice blessings goes to those that love you. You got your choice blessings reserved for your children. I know I'm right. Let me just tie a scripture to it. Don't you remember the story of Lazarus found in John chapter 11? When you read that story, it starts out introducing to us uh, the people in the story. And it talks about Mary and how Mary was the one that poured that perfume all on Jesus. And now that perfume was supposed to have been kept for your wedding night. You're supposed to, uh, you know, dock yourself up for your husband on your wedding. But she poured it all on Jesus. Why is that? Because she loved Jesus. So the story was trying to let us see that there was a love relationship. And then it tells us how Jesus loved Lazarus. And then the Bible says that Lazarus got sick. And they sent for Jesus and they sent it with a message, the one that you love is sick. So come see about him because we know you love Lazarus. But the Bible said Jesus stayed there two more days. And then he finally showed up. But that was four days later. And the Bible says that Martha showed up too when she found that Jesus was there. And she said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And, and then and she, he sent for Mary. And Mary showed up with the same thing. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, what did y'all bear him? Sit down there. He went on down there and he said, Take away the stone. They say, By now, he, he's thanking Lord, it's been four days. He said, Take away the stone. Didn't I tell you you're going to see the glory of God? He said, Take away the stone. Let me tell you something. Jesus, uh, you know, so often we say, I'm waiting on God, but God said, I'm waiting on you. See, if you want God to do something, then you got to do what you can do. And then he's going to do what you cannot do. You can take away the stone. Now he's going to do something that you can't do. He said, Lazarus come forth and he that was dead and was wrapped in grave clothes hopped out of the grave. Then Jesus told him to do something. He said, now you loose him and let him go. I done done what you can't do, now you do what you can do. Let me tell you something, you want your prayers answered. Don't be expecting God to do something that you can do. God will do what you cannot do. And you do what you can do. But God has his best blessings Reserved for those that love him. And they thought that Jesus was coming to raise or to see about the sick. But that ain't why he was coming. 
He was coming to raise the dead. Yeah. All right. See, sometimes God don't do what we want him to do because God has something bigger yeah. and better yeah. in mind. Did you hear what I said? Yes. See, God loves you and God is going to answer your prayer. But a lot of times he ain't going to answer it the way that you want your prayer answered. Because God is always thinking about the glory of God. In other words, how can I put God on display? How can other folks see God in this situation? See, God want to do something so big and so powerful in your life that when folks look at it, they will say, that had to be God. So God don't answer your prayer the way that you want him to answer it, but he's going to answer it. Just like when Martha and Mary, that he didn't come when he want, they wanted him to come, did he? But he was right on time. How many of you know he may not come? I say he may not come. I say he may not come when you want him. But he's going to be right on time. Because God has got something bigger and better. Listen, don't fall out with God. Don't get angry with God. Don't get mad at God. Don't get bitter with God. God is up to something great. You don't heard your pastor say that over and over. When, when, when God don't come through for you, when you think he ought to come through and how you think he ought to come through, he's up to something. As I come to a close, I heard a story about this pastor in Chicago. This pastor in Chicago, his little son, loved the Chicago Bulls. He loved the Bulls. And I forget, I think it was L.A. It was going to be a big game in town. They at the Bulls Stadium. And so the little boy wanted his daddy to watch the game with, with him on that particular night. So he had been asking him all week, Daddy, you going to get off work early enough where you can come home and watch the game with me? You know, when you enjoy something, you want to have somebody to enjoy it with you. Daddy didn't say nothing. He asked him next time, Daddy, you going to get off work early to, to come home and watch the game with me? Daddy didn't say nothing. He asked him the next time, Daddy, you going to get off work early enough to come home and watch the game with me? He said, when the, when the game going to be? He told him when the game. He said, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll fix my schedule where I can watch the game with you. So the day finally came. Sure enough, the, the man got off work at 5 o'clock, made it on home, 5.30. And uh, the little boy was excited. He said, Dad, we're going to watch the game tonight? He said, we're going to watch the game tonight. But he said, but I want you to go with me right now. He said, where you got to go? He said, I got to go and see the sick. I got to go and do a visitation. Come on, go with me. And so that's what he did. Little boy jumped in the car, him and his daddy, they went to the visitation. After the visitation, then prayed for the sick. He said, Daddy, we're ready to go back home. He said, not yet. Got to go on another visitation. Little boy starts said, Daddy, don't forget about the game now. We got the game tonight. So I ain't gonna forget about the game. He went on to the other visitation. He said, I want you to pray. And little boy went on, he prayed, and he prayed fast too, <laughs> so he can go on to the game. He said, Daddy, we be ready to go home now? He said, not yet. He said, got another visitation. Daddy, it's getting kind of close. He said, we got another visitation. He said, where, the, where that one at? He said, well, that one is gonna be downtown there at the hospital. Oh boy, the boy now. He's getting really upset because they done moved from way over here. Now they got to go way downtown. And boy, he, he don't know if they're going to be able to make it back on time. And so they got down there. Matter of fact, the boy was so mad at his dad, he didn't even want to hardly come in the room. He just stood there at the door sucking. 
He had his head down and he wasn't praying either. <laughs> he was mad at his daddy. His daddy got ready to pray. He looked at the clock. It was 7 o'clock. Game starts at 7.15. He went on prayed. They went on out the little boy and wasn't saying nothing. Went on to the car because he knew it was going to take about 45 minutes <laughs> to make it back home. But his dad made, got in the car and he made a right turn. He said, Daddy, you're going the wrong way. He said, no, no, I'm going the right way. He said, but the way we normally go home when we're downtown, we, we go that way and we catch the freeway. And then we, he said, no, no, I know what I'm doing. He turned around. See, what the daddy had intentionally done, he had set up his schedule where he worked his way to downtown. And the hospital was right around the corner from the United Center where the Bulls play basketball. And because he knew somebody that knew somebody in the Chicago Bulls, he had two courtside tickets to watch that game. So sure enough, they watched the game, but not at home but right there in person. See, that's how our God works. He's working on something. And it's going to be bigger and better than what you could imagine or even think. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this word. You, now take this word and use it to bring on and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.